Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech and Education Matters in many ways. So this is about education and it's about how education matters with Vasilis Sirmos. He's Vice President of Research and Innovation at UH Manoa uh, or UH in general. Let me say that. Welcome to the show, Vasilis. Thank you, Jay, for having me. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, well, this is, these are difficult times, obviously, including for the university. Uh, you've been on lockdown for a while. Your students have been studying by remote, most of them. And I wonder if you could give me a, a snapshot of where we are in that continuum. Uh, when are things opening up? How are they opening up? Uh, what, what challenges do you see in opening things up? So as probably a lot of your viewers uh, know, uh, President Lassner has made an announcement that uh, in the fall, uh, August, the university will open up uh, for our students in some type of a form. Probably is not going to, we're not going to come back to the normal uh, standard, if you will, but uh, we'll open up our campus and uh, we will try to provide uh, some type of hybrid. Uh, uh, experience between uh, distance learning and in-class uh, classes. Uh, we're going to make sure we actually follow whatever the science tells us to do. There are uh, social distancing, the mask, the sanitizers, but uh, we're hopeful that uh, we can put a place together. We're also uh, working very closely with our Department of Health. We always ask for their guidance of how to do things and how to bring up all our campuses to, to functionality. It's going to be a difficult fall, but uh, hopefully amongst our faculty and students will uh, we'll do it. Yeah. Well, you know, it strikes me that if there's anybody who can pull this off, it's the university. Why? Because the university has uh, all this talent. And part of the talent is, um, you know, the faculty, of course, teaching and uh, using the technology and more than that, developing the technology. And so you have Zoom. We have, we have all, every one of us has learned about Zoom. Um, it's quite interesting. Uh, you and I were at Dave Carl's 70th birthday on Friday and it was all by Zoom and 70 odd people showed up um, <laughs> and it worked very well, don't you think? Indeed it did. And uh, as you said, it's going to be all about technology. So for us to open up, they're going to be two things that are going to be very important. Important One is contact tracing and the other is testing. So testing, testing to death and uh, contact tracing. These are very important issues and uh, we're trying to put a plan together. We have the technology also within the university. So we're trying to work with the Department of Health to see how we can use our technology in our laboratories to all to to open our campuses safely so yes it is all about technology yeah and that contact tracing um i was telling you that there was an announcement that google and facebook were collaborating on the possibility of a, of a smartphone app uh, which would help contact tracing and, and i can see in fact we had a show about what that might include the, the functionality that might include and it was pretty exciting to imagine uh, how that would work and what it would do for a given community. Well, it seems to me this is one of those areas where information technology has developed at the university or with collaborating with others by the university um, could be not only valuable in terms of returning to normal operations. I shouldn't use the word normal. We're never going to have normal again. It, to routine operations at the university. Um, and um, it, it also will have an effect on, could have an effect on the state in general. For example, um, if it was useful to uh, provide some comfort to visitors, that uh, Hawaii was not only a, a beautiful place of, and, a, and a great environment, but also a safe environment where they didn't have to worry about getting sick, um, that would really open, open the gates for tourism again. 
And uh, I think we need that just as a practical matter. Uh, so it's an example of the university reaching out with its, with its resources, its technology, its, its science, and helping the community in such a way so that everyone benefits. Yeah, so we are in alignment uh, with the state. We're in alignment and in talks with the Department of Health. Uh, we have a very good relationship with Dr. Park and Dr. Anderson. So we have, uh, we're working on plans to how to open and also help the state, especially with the contact tracing piece. Uh, it is difficult. It's not, the, it sounds much easier than it actually is. It is time consuming and uh, we are going to be providing some of our uh, health uh, students uh, uh, to do some of the contact tracing or in health graduates, uh, health sciences graduates. So. This is something that we're looking forward to do and help. And uh, as you said, uh, I think both uh, the state, and it's not one individual, but us as a state, that we have done an outstanding job of uh, containing uh, the outbreak, if you will. Uh, Honolulu is a major metropolitan area, and we haven't seen an outbreak like uh, we've seen in other areas. So. I think uh, the community has done outstandingly in containing this pandemic. So hopefully we will be able to do as good coming uh, in the future. So I'm, I'm very, I'm very hopeful. Yeah, but I think we all, we all recognize that uh, the university is an important engine of the economy directly and indirectly. Um, and we need to get it back um, you know, on its feet soon. Uh, I guess the question in the meantime is, uh, can we talk a little about how you've suffered? Because every, every business and every institution, yes. educational and otherwise, has suffered. So for us, uh, the lack of uh, students on campus uh, does present a problem, a financial problem. Uh, our uh, campus services are not uh, working. Our residence halls are not open. Uh, our classrooms are not open. So. Uh, we are seeing a loss of revenue for all our auxiliary and commercial uh, operations. Uh, we are looking at uh, the legislature this week of how they will deal with a pretty large hole in the budget. A billion dollars is a big number to plug. Uh, on the other hand, uh, on the research area, we have been fortunate. Uh, uh, this is going to be a record year for the University of Hawaii in uh, research expenditures. So we're looking on an increase uh, on uh, research awards and expenditures. So this is great for our faculty. It's great for our students, postdocs, and the 10,000 people we hire on these $450 million that we get annually from uh, the federal government. So at least one stream of revenue within the university is stable and will be stable in the foreseeable uh, future. And to give you an example of why this is so important, our budget, the university budget, has three main revenue streams. One is the general fund allocation, one is the tuition we receive from the students, and the third one is former research. Roughly, each one of those uh, revenues is one third of our budget. So at least one third of our budget is stable and will be stable for the foreseeable student, uh, future. So we're looking forward to open up for our research labs too. It's important that we maintain our research. We are operating at this time, but with the lack of students, it must, it's a little bit more difficult. So, so there is a little bit of hope there. Well, like Stanford, if you if you hit um, a good um, technology science project that, that can be commercialized yeah. through through your commercialization, uh, what is it, uh, accelerator? Later, yes, we have our UH, UH Ventures accelerator. It's uh, our accelerator is still working through Zoom, if you will. Uh, so we do all our training and all our meetings through Zoom. So we're still working our accelerator acceleration programs, uh, the UH Ventures, our technology programs. So these are going well. Actually, we have a couple of those ventures in the health area. And one of them is in the pharmacy and how we can use pharmacists to better provide uh, healthcare services. So we're looking at all these type of activities and uh, 
some of them have a lot of uh, have a lot of potential. So, as I said, uh, we in the research area we feel uh, very positive for our future. Uh, Hawaii is a unique place, and I tell everybody. Uh, it's not only location, location about tourism, it's location, location about a lot of things in this state. And this state is wonderful for oceanography, sea level rise, climate change, astronomy, uh, multi-ethnic studies in healthcare. So we are a leader because of our location. So uh, we want to maintain that. And as you said, if we somehow market uh, the state of Hawaii as a safe place to travel and vacation, we're going to be a leader as we have been in tourism as well. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the, the tourism is a big part of our economy, and we want to make uh, uh, provide a, a safe place for people to travel and for us to live. So. So we're very, we're, we're excited. Uh, yes, we're going to have challenges. But on the other hand, you know, challenges also produce opportunities. And we see a lot of opportunities for our university, for our students and our faculty. And we have great faculty and great students. Well, you know, this goes back um, 10 years or so. But at a meeting of the Hawaii Venture Capital Association, there was a, which includes investors and um, mm -hmm you know, technology people, technology entrepreneurs. Um, there was a fellow who stood up and said, uh, you know, we, we really know about tourism. We know how it works. We have, you know, years of experience with it, uh, right down to exactly how you do it. And uh, what was remarkable for him, and he was uh, recently out of the service at the time, and he was an information technology person. What was remarkable for him was that the information technology that the hotels are using uh, was developed outside of Hawaii. So I think there's a, there's a lush opportunity there, especially now when they have to come back, when they'll be in the mood for new technology, maybe better technology than they had before to be more efficient, not only in the hotel registration side, but on all the tours, you know, the accessory uses uh, that feed into the hotels. So this could be a brand new tourism, not the same. And the university could be involved in that on the information tech. It just comes to mind because of that discussion 10 years ago. Yeah, and, uh, and you're absolutely right. And it's not only the tourism, it's gonna be in every state of our life is gonna be, is gonna be very different. And technology is gonna be integrated uh, very, very deeply. And to give you an idea, it's not only in tourism, but it's also in, uh, information systems in financial services. You see, you have the Hawaii Executive Council uh, with the True Initiative. They are integrating uh, technology in a lot of different uh, areas, in a lot of different services. So it is something that the community understands. The university is part of that effort. Uh, we're working with the Hawaii Business Roundtable. We're working with the private sector. Uh, you're going to see an explosion uh, in jobs and technologies, not only in the Zoom and the IT, but in the backbone of that technology, whether that's cybersecurity, information system, computer systems, you're going to see an unbelievable explosion. So if I were a new graduate, I would look or to go into the areas of computer science, data science, data visualization, there's going to be an explosion of jobs uh, out there. So uh, I had to put the plug there for my type of uh, areas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what's coming too is uh, talking about Zoom and how everybody's getting used to it. Um, fact is, there's a lot of people who are going to need retraining because yes. their old jobs may have gone away. And how do you reach? Well, the university can and does retrain them. It can use Zoom. They don't have to go to the campus. They don't have to park or anything. They can use Zoom, go to classes. They can engage the same way you and I are engaging right now, if not better, um, better than the normal arrangement. And they could, they could be retrained. And yes. then they could be more useful. And the economy can be more flexible, or more nimble with that. And so the university can provide that kind of outreach as never before in order to be a, you know, in, in a collaboration with the community at large.
Yeah, and you're absolutely right. Actually, the job market is never going to look the same uh, in the future. So a lot of people are going to have to retrain and to up their skills and, uh, uh, in order to re-enter the job market. And uh, both the UH Manoa, which is our research campus and our four years and the community colleges, they have a, a leading role to play into that retraining uh, effort. And uh, going to be thousands of people we're going to be retraining in the next couple of years. And, uh, Hopefully they're going to be retrained in a good paying jobs and uh, they're going to be retrained for skills that they're going to uh, retain for the rest of their lives. Because as, as I tell people, think what happened after 9-11, we actually stood a whole industry out of that 9-11. It's called TSA and everything that goes around it. Uh, what is going to happen uh, after we start thinking again, we're going to stand up a whole industry after COVID-19 and it's going to look as big and as large as a TSA. So you're going to have to retrain a whole set of people to be able to perform this type of activity. So I am hopeful that the vaccine will be, will be found. I'm, I don't know uh, how soon it's going to be. It's more likely going to be a couple of years from now as opposed to people are saying in September or October. I also want to remind your viewers but that there has been no vaccine in the history uh, the, for coronavirus, never been found one. So I'm pretty sure now it's going to be the exception because it is a pandemic. But I want to be uh, very careful saying all of a sudden in the fall we have a vaccine and then we go back to what it used to be. I'm not so sure about it. Mm. You know, uh, but but that, that reminds me of uh, something we should discuss, and that is the work at uh, the John A. Burns School of Medicine. Mm -hmm. You have some very international and local, very skilled, world class uh, researchers there uh, in the in the medical school and in the cancer research center. Uh, we've we've talked to a number of them uh, about their work in uh, virology, and we talked to one most recently that really interests me. His name was Lu Peng. And he's Chinese, although he's been in the U.S. for 20 years. Uh, I think he studied or uh, researched in the Midwest and, and then joined uh, Jabsom. And he's working on a project involving a therapeutic uh, which uh, suppresses the immune reaction, the cytokine reaction um, in COVID. And he's working on it. This is very interesting. He's working on it with an old buddy of his who is from Wuhan. Who, who is a, you know, a, a biochemical medical researcher in Wuhan. I say to myself, this is really important that we do this, that we, we have people here in the medical school working on these things um, and that they collaborate with other people around the world. I mean, global collaborations could be necessary, not only for vaccine, but for therapeutics. And you have that going right now. I, I don't know and, what and, stages. And and, yeah. and actually, Jepsum has a wonderful department of uh, tropical infectious diseases uh, uh, with do uh, Dr. Nurekar, Vivek Nunekar, and uh, Axel, Dr. Axel. So we have a pretty good uh, department. And uh, I don't know if you uh, saw in the news, UCSD is going to be opening up. And the way they're going to try to open, it, uh, open the campus up is by engaging their medical school and providing testing for everybody pretty much on the campus and try to do testing and contact tracing before going into fall operations and run a pilot program. So I'm pretty sure that Jepsum and the Cancer Center and our nursing, uh, the School of Nursing, are going to play a paramount role for us opening up the campus and also a paramount role for opening up uh, our communities for, for our citizens to be safe. So uh, we're looking in several type of pilot programs to engage Chapsum and the, the Department of Tropical and Infectious Diseases to lead the way. Yeah, a very, very promising. And one thing you said before about um, airport security and TSA and all that, there was an article in the paper a few days ago about, um, about Hong Kong. And there have been some you know, clever people in Hong Kong who have designed a, um, a sanitation, a sanit, what do you want to call it? A, uh, 
a, a cleanup machine. Mm -hmm. I can't think of the right word at the airport. You know, so like right now you walk through and and the uh, the machine you know takes takes a picture of you on X rays, whatever it does, to see if you have weapons or something of concern. This machine is different. This machine actually sanitizes you, uh, your whole body, uh, as you walk through. And they're doing this right now in Hong Kong. So I say to myself, well, gee, we could do that. It doesn't sound like it's rocket science. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of using the available technology and building a machine like that, but doing it better and doing it here and publicizing it's part of our safe environment here in Hawaii for tourists. Yes, and uh, you're absolutely right. It's gonna, there is going to be technology. The, the human ingenuity has no bounds. So uh, I'm uh, very hopeful that we're going to see some uh, 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 tremendous technological advances in the healthcare system. And you're going to see machines that they're probably going to screen people in a couple minutes. And while you're going through a TSA machine, probably you're going to be going through another TSA testing station. And you're going to have like a health password that says hey he or she is free of COVID-19 on any other pandemic so how this thing or the virus is how these things are going to be integrated within the community and within the system is going to be quite uh, a complex issue and uh, and very interesting so as I said I do perceive there's going to be a whole te technology industry around this type of, of activities uh, for us and everybody else in the world. Yeah, and these technologies also, aside from affecting um, tourism, they also affect the average person. I mean, for example, my wife and me are still holed up crawling the walls. A lot of people we know are doing that. And we have little um, Zoom meetings with them on Sunday night and we, we all have a gimlet together, you know, virtually. <laughs> <laughs> and we're probably gonna stay that way until we feel comfortable. And there's a lot of people like that not everybody, some people really have to work, it's critical, but there's a lot of people who don't, they'll manage without working. Um, they're not gonna feel comfortable in, until something comes along that makes them feel comfortable. The technology you're talking about will make people in general, the population of the state, feel comfortable to go back to work, to try yeah. new things, to take risks, to be entrepreneurs, start businesses, what have you. And so what the university does in this regard has a, as it's still yet another effect on our reopening. Yes, and, and, and as you mentioned, Jay, it is not only about the technology and about opening up the economy, it is about how safe the people feel to go out there. Because you can open as many stores, as, as many malls you want, as many restaurants you want, but if uh, the community does not feel safe to visit those places, the economy still will suffer. So. Uh, it's going to be a tough road back to normalcy because it's not only a technology issue, but it is also a culture issue. It is also how you feel to go out and do the things that you used to do, right? And uh, and that uh, that is uh, as uh, as important as anything else. So how we feel safe and uh, what it takes for us to feel safe is very important. Yeah. One, one other thing I wanted to talk to you about is, uh, is faculty. And I wondered if you had had any adverse effect in losing faculty and having to cut faculty and having to cut faculty pay, whether you foresee any of that in the future. Um, and you know what, what, what is the state of your recruiting process right now to bring in more faculty? You know, you have a huge number of faculty and you must always be involved in recruiting faculty and researchers. So what is it like? So let me start with an easy one. Uh, the president, uh, following uh, Governor Ige's uh, executive order, he has put a freeze on all hiring, faculty, staff, everybody, uh, until further notice. So most of faculty recruiting has been uh, put uh, on a standstill. Uh, we have not lost uh, any faculty, but uh, what uh, I worry about is that, uh, you know, faculty is overworked, the workload is going to increase, uh, you know, distance learning is a wonderful tool, but you have to retrain yourself, you have to retrain how you're going to deliver classes on a 
online environment. So that will be a new challenge. However, our faculty is smart enough and good enough to figure that out. So that's another thing. And then how our research labs are going to work. And right now they're working pretty good as long as we uh, follow the social distancing uh, measures. Uh, what I worry is that as faculty retire mostly, mm. especially if there are any uh, pay reductions, because some people, especially uh, more senior people, will probably decide to retire, then you get very good, you lose very good faculty, and then you don't have the opportunity to replenish that faculty talent you lost. And that's where I'm worried because that $450 million doesn't show up because all of a sudden somebody told us, here is some money for you to spend. It shows up because our faculty competes all the time to get that money. So if we do not replenish the faculty talent, our extramural funds are also going to suffer. So these are worries we have. Hopefully, the legislature is going to be kind to us uh, and is going to be kind to a lot of other, uh, actually, uh, state agencies. And we all understand that it's going to be difficult and we all going to suffer, but uh, we, we're going to get through this. I'm sure you will. Well, one thing that comes to mind is that, um, you know, right now your uh, sports are really down. You can't, you can't bring people together for sports. Uh, it, it may be that they can uh, do baseball on Zoom, but uh, that's hard. And I wonder how your sports programs have fared under, under COVID and, and what the plan would be and what the benefits would be in reopening them. That is a million dollar question. Uh, uh, and it's not only for UH, it is for every institution of higher education. Uh, sports is a big part of the campus life, the campus uh, engagement. It is a source of revenue. Uh, it is a source of pride for our university. It is our marketing uh, to the mainland and everybody and everywhere else. So with the lack of athletics, uh, there is going to be a really tough, tough time ahead. So if I were the president, uh, uh, that probably would be the number one thing that would keep me <laughs> awake every night with the athletics program. But thank God I'm not. Yeah, the other thing, uh, Mr. Lusses, is that uh, when when you um, uh, when you're in your job, you always have new projects ahead of you. You're always planning new things. Yes. It's it's part of the way things work at a major university, and of course, you you know you had to be looking for the funding for these projects. So I would imagine that you had a number of projects there on the slate at the end of 2019, which yes. have been stopped. And I wonder if, you know, with due regard for the fact that you are going to need funding from the university, that you, uh, from the uh, legislature and the, and the university uh, should be a high priority for the legislature for all the reasons we've been discussing. Um, mm -hmm. What about these projects? Uh, uh, aren't they also high priorities for you to be able to start them up again? They sure are. Uh, and uh, a we are actually within the research area, and I think within the university, we're good stewards of our financial resources. And for the time being, projects that uh, they have been stopped, we have uh, bridge funding for people to, uh, to pay. So uh, we can do that for a couple more months. Uh, we are looking at to see how uh, the legislature is going to react to the billion dollar budget deficit and then make a, make a determination how to restart some of those projects and, uh, and uh, make them financially viable again. Well, thank you, Vasilos. Uh, Vasilos Simos, Sirmos, uh, the Vice President of uh, Research and Innovation at UH, and he certainly got his job cut out for him in the next few months. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time with us, Vasilos. Thank you, Jay, and always a pleasure to be with you. Always a pleasure. Thank Aloha. You.